Greetings gamers and welcome to episode 13 of the 07 Iron podcast. Today we have a very special guest who's not an Iron Man, which I guess that's a first for us. And uh, he's actually a clogger. So uh, Cappy Online, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, hello, I'm Camping Online. As Lone Jim Rat said, I'm not an Iron, so I'm honored to be on this podcast here. Thank you for having me. Dude, how does it feel to be the first main to break the ice in the Osama podcast? It, it feels uh, correct, I suppose. It's about time somebody, a real account, got onto the podcast, you know? <laughs> Didn't know what you said, a real account? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, we haven't really planned much on this podcast. Like, all we kind of did was uh, we scheduled a time and um, told ourselves we would talk about clog and, like... Um, efficient macro efficient pathing for uh, completing the uh, collection log and um yeah so by yeah. the way like as an fyi this uh, podcast is being streamed live on our twitches so i'll make sure to include both our youtubes and twitches in the description and uh, make sure you drop us both a follow and a subscription as well on youtube getting that plug out of the way right up top i respect yeah, you got it. it dude after watching that settled vi uh, podcast with sebe i didn't understand the importance of doing so so it's very <laughs> crucial. It was, oh, yeah, we we haven't really scheduled like a lot of real things to talk about. But when I was doing a couple other podcasts uh, earlier, I was like, man, the next person I want to talk to is Lone Gym Rat. And I think I even messaged you being like, hey, would you be down to do a podcast sometime? And I think that was probably two months ago. Yeah, that, so, I remember it was a while ago. <laughs> it's about time we finally actually jumped in a call and and chatted yeah i agree it was it was long overdue even some people were telling me on my twitch like when are you doing a podcast with uh, camping i was like uh, <laughs> i don't know i know one of one of my one of my friends uh borrow iron he's been bugging me he's like when's the next podcast gonna be when's the next podcast gonna be all right so uh, let's jump into the straight subject which is um the general macro efficient path for clogging, which has definitely shifted a little bit over the last several years. And even uh, in the last several months, I'd say macro efficiency has changed a lot because there have been a lot of things that uh, you used to have to be like super macro efficient about for like insanely long term grinds that Jagex has started to help people out with a little bit. The main ones I always think of would be like Jar of Darkness, Evil Chicken, and uh, now Phoenix Pet too with the proposed changes that haven't come in yet. Yeah, they've definitely made significant updates to speed it up. Um, what What are your thoughts on, I mean, I, I'm jumping straight into it, but whatever. What are your thoughts on not being able to roll dupes for Evil Chicken, Dust Mystic, and Dagon High? It would be interesting, I guess. It would definitely help with those since those are... I mean, Dagenhai, not as much. Even as an iron, getting Laren's keys isn't too bad, especially now that Slayer is the meta for uh, for getting the rev weapons. But for Evil Chicken and Dusk Mystic, that would be a pretty huge change. Yeah, especially for Dusk Mystic. That would be huge. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. And, well... What we're thinking about that, I would assume on that same list would also be the uh, Dragonstone armor set as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot about those. That one's just way too brutal for irons, though. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. literally just not in the realm of possibility for Iron Men because I think expected completion is like 5,000 or something like that. It's Yeah, it's, it's 5, not good. And the issue is not the shards, the keys. Yeah. And the current meta for irons to grind those is to do deranged archaeologist with a shadow and you get five keys an hour. Oh my god. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> At I've least you get memes, some but... you get some of the keys back from opening the chest, but it's probably only what, like fifteen percent or yeah, something I like that. I did the that. calcs in the video that I made on that. I think it's like twenty two percent key return and you get some shards back too, but it's not enough to uh not at all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's brutal. But that one is not like something that you should like. Speaking of macro efficiency, that's not something you should actively grind as an iron. That would be really dumb. You should just be, you know, uh, getting keys passively through PBM, 
I mean, Agreed. that's the only thing you have left, and I guess you can full send it for the memes. Yeah. Um, that's been, a, that's been like the main thing that I've been thinking about when it comes to macro efficiency is just like, what are the best things to like do now? And what are the best things to put off doing until a better method for it comes out? Because there are definitely some things that are like that. Um, one of the things, I guess I never, before I jump into a different topic, I don't know how I feel about um, restricting dupes on items like that. My heart of hearts wants to say, no, we shouldn't be uh, making it so that you always get a new one. Because maybe that's just my collection logger brain being like, you're going to get duplicates. That's just a fact of life. But at the same time, oh man, it would really help out those grinds so much to not have to deal with an insane amount of dupes. Yeah, I think the issue is it's like more of a timeline situation where in the past some clog items were really really Green brutal oh, mm -hmm. someone just follow me shit i should maybe turn that off ah fuck it uh so um like the clog grinds were really really brutal and uh not a lot of people are clogging so there was not much like attention given to how disgustingly stupidly rare the jar of darkness was but yeah. as clogging became more popular and more and more people started making videos on it and also partaking in the activity uh, it gave more attention to Jagex on the subject, and people started complaining more, resulting in Jagex making changes. So I think if more people join clogging, we're going to get a lot more updates that are going to make clog significantly faster. And you asked yeah, for absolutely. a list of, of things that could affect the um, like clog in the future, which is very important to think about because it's a... Like, for example, for me, I did Wildy Slayer before the change, mm -hmm. like back last year or something. And I talked that I lost around 80 hours from doing it that early instead of waiting. Mm -hmm. My other friend like Curie or um, or uh, Fulgore, they waited for the wildy change. So they literally saved 80 to 100 hours over me. But that's not so like I, I didn't I knew the update was coming, <laughs> but I told myself that I would do Dagonite for, for just because it looked fun. But one yeah. thing that I think is going to get changed soon is Konar Slayer. And I, I know that's one that you've been mentioning. It. Yeah. I think they're either going to do two things. They're either going to remove dupes, which I would not be very happy, like you said. I mean, I would take it because I'm not done the grind, but I think it's not a good direction. Or they're going to add keys to superiors, which that would be pretty big buff. For I know that's the one that um, you and maybe some other people have been mentioning. And I'm like, that actually makes a lot of sense to have. Well, you were thinking that it would always be a superior would always drop a brimstone key, correct? Well, it's the case in the Wildy Slayer. It's just it wasn't the case in the regular conventional Slayer. Oh, um, Wildy Slayer uh, monster, Wildy Superior monsters always drop a Larynx key. Yeah, interesting. So there is already a precedent for it too, and I'm like, it makes sense since um, that's how it works with Dark Totems, of course, too. Uh, yeah, that that too. That would make Dark like sup in Catacombs. Superior in Catacombs would be so good. <laughs> Yeah, they would drop totem their normal drop plus a totem plus a brimstone key. Oh, that'd be sick. But yeah, that's a change, and I'm I'm pretty confident that we're gonna see that this year. One thing that I proposed in a, a video a couple months ago was to add Jad and Infernal Tasks from Konar, and have all the oh. monsters in the like as you're fighting like the encounter. Like imagine doing Jad, any monster you kill has a chance to drop a spear as in the normal function. And I calc that you would get on average 1.5 brimstone keys per Jad and 3.5 brimstone keys per Inferno run. Interesting. Which wouldn't even be that OP. Like even if you assume like a Adicon shows up and does like 45 minute Inferno, that's still under five keys an hour, which isn't even comparable to Smoke Devils. So I think it would be a fair update. Yeah, that's pretty good, but not not, not overpowered. I wouldn't say. But that's definitely lone gym right agenda because I don't have those two <laughs> pets. <laughs> I'll admit that. Yeah, no, I, I think those are those are both better suggestions than just removing the ability to get a duplicate. Yeah. In my I think opinion. So too. It's better I, I don't remember who said that, but someone on the clock discord said it's better to add like new sources than to like nerf or buff drop rates. Uh, I would absolutely I agree. I think that's the best way to solve the the uh, i would say an issue and more like the inconvenience of the yeah 
Uh, one thing too I think is going to get devalued is uh, Evil Chicken. Either by not rolling dupes or with the new um, woodcutting minigame, they're going to have a way to get uh, eggs. And I talk that if you can get more than 10 or 12 eggs an hour actively, it's better than Birdhouse Runs. How many was that? Uh, 10 to 12 an hour, it's going to be better than Birdhouse Runs. Because a Birdhouse Run on average takes around a minute and you get on average 0.21 eggs. So uh, around 10 to 12 eggs per hour, if you like factor it in actively. I don't now, know if we'll ever get something that's that good. Yeah, that would for, be really like good active rate. grinding. That would be pretty insane. That's why I don't think so. But you never know with Jagex. Jagex might make it 25 eggs an hour and then it just breaks the meta. That would be pretty ridiculous. But I, I like the Bird Austin meta. I think it's really cool. I hope it stays. I don't hate it. I just hate that I have to do it forever, basically. <laughs> oh, not forever until you, you spoon the completion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's something that I've, I've always disliked dailies too, though, a little bit. But it's also, it's not even a daily. It's like I could always be doing daily. more birdhouse runs. Yeah. So it's like I always feel like I could be doing more. But at the same time, though, I've started to grow a little bit fond of, of doing my dailies and birdhouse runs. It's it's not too bad. Maybe it's just the Stockholm Syndrome kicking in. You never know. Yeah, it's, it's funny too because I finished Evil Chicken and I have only done like five Birdhouse runs in the past month. I lost nice. all motivation to do Birdhouse runs. Oh, Billy Clue. But yeah, is there any other um, like uh, collection lock slots that think are going to get devalued? I think um, it's inevitable that the CM capes are going to get changed. Oh, yeah. That one is... Um... Uh, you want to get into that one? Because I, I have... <laughs> you have opinions some opinions on that, on that one? I, I would say that I don't want it to change. I just think it's inevitable that it will change. Yeah, I have the exact same feeling. Also, welcome back, chat. I think my stream disconnected for a second there, so I... Stopped it and then restarted. Looks like we're we're back in business now. Sorry about that. Um, I, I think like the two K CM cape is a very prestigious item, and if they combine the KCs, they're gonna ruin that. And I know yeah. people say like, oh, it's gonna devalue for the people who've done the grind already. There's only sixty six or sixty seven people with the two K cape right now in the game, which is really I know insane. that's why that's why I'm like it's so crazy but at the same time it's also so crazy no one in their right mind should want to have to do 2k cms but i mean i, I want to do it <laughs> oh boy i don't know if i'd ever but, have uh, the motivation to do that i like cms and i still don't think i'd ever be able to do that many of them i think if they made cms less aids for irons uh like where irons and mains could cm together without being a significant disadvantage it would be I would mm. be considered grinding 2k but right now it, I can't do no main is ever gonna want to take an iron because it just adds like a bit of nu nuisance uh, so I have to go with other irons so the raids are much slower and all that mm -hmm. what's but, the main thing that messes up with having irons it's uh you know how when you kill a monster in, in CM or in chambers in general like it drops the loot to the person who MVPs the boss oh I got you yeah or if uh, you're an iron yeah. you can't pick it up and so you need to MVP it to be able to pick it up yourself. And if an iron MVPs a boss, it drops to everyone for some reason. It's mostly so it's mostly dealing with um, making sure the iron gets their overload. Uh, that's okay because you can prep one. The issue is shamans. You you need to get seeds to because the iron has to prep for everyone because uh, the mains can't give bruise to the iron. So you'd have to do a five man or a trio. Have the iron pick up shaman seeds, plant them, and then prep for the whole team. Well, everyone else no preps. Uh, unless you want to do like gotcha. 35 minute trios or 40 minute trios, which are uh, much slower. But you can do that too. That's what I plan to do. Do like slow trios with the CC. Yeah, whenever I was doing CMs, we, we actually did a lot of CMs with an iron friend of mine. But we were not breaking any world record times, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're very hard to be efficient because you need to learn like proper inventory and bank management. Yes, absolutely okay. the hardest part of of um of doing CMs isn't even killing the bosses. It's just 
making sure that when you withdraw your inventory from the bank, it doesn't absolutely no fuck everything up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greetings, gamers. Once once you learn that, it's uh, it's really chill. I need to turn off my. Yeah, it's it's really not bad. I I actually do quite enjoy CMs. And that is part of the thing too that I'm kind of happy that CMs have a place in the meta because of the CM capes. And I mean, I suppose even with even if they did the change, you'd still have to do CMs for dust and everything, of course. But it would make me a little sad to see them go. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, you know, I actually changed my entire like uh, plan because of that proposal. Like, I planned to do CMs till pet because I'm still missing Chambers pet. And then when I get the pet, mm -hmm. I'll just stop CMs and just wait for this to be changed. Because it is getting, like you said, it's getting changed, whether we like it or not. Yeah, it definitely will be eventually. It. Yeah, that's probably what I would do too. But also I'm more focused on, if I am going to raid, I'm probably going to be doing TOAs. Mm -hmm. I'm doing TOA first as well. I want 2k cape as soon as I can. But I keep telling myself that I'll do certain grinds and then I never get back to doing them because I get sidetracked by something else instead. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I feel that too. <laughs> like the Callisto just completely sidetracked you. <laughs> There's never, never enough time to do everything that I want to do in this game. Yeah, I, I changed my mentality on that too. Like uh, instead of actually like pushing for like uh, things I don't like to do because it's clogged, I just do shit I want to do. And I just kind of mm -hmm. go with the flow, and it's much more enjoyable that way. Same. I definitely grind out certain things for content sometimes, but for the most part, it's just whatever I'm I'm interested in doing at the moment. That's what I'll grind out. Okay, I have a content idea for you that's really cringe, but I want to know your honest thoughts about it. <laughs> Inferno. Well, I mean, that's something you should definitely do. We can talk about that later, <laughs> actually, because that's another subject. But uh, okay. what I was thinking of doing is... Because I'm really down bad on Zora scales, and I really hate Zora. Okay. So I told myself what I would do is I would start off a video, and I would go, all right, boys, I think we need to grind out some Zora scales. And I would show my stack of, like, 40 or whatever, because I have no scales. Then I would dismantle my blowpipe, Sir Palm, and Trident, and I would say, all right, boys, we have to go to Zora. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would piss that's, off a lot of people, though. That's pretty stupid, but I fucking love it. <laughs> The only problem about doing that is I can't do Toa because I need a blowpipe. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't hurt you at Zolra though, since obviously you've you've got There's a Tebow, right? Shadow. So yeah. I might do that one day. But yeah. Alright, you wanna talk about Inferno? We have to I think we have to get that oh, one out boy. of the way. Man, maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't have brought it up to begin with. Yeah. That was on me. So what's the yeah. plan on that? I, I mean, eventually I'm going to get there. I need to get somebody to teach me just like the basics so that I can learn from there, I think, which I know there are plenty of people that said they would teach me the basics. So it's definitely just on me being a little bit lazy. But one of these days, I'll eventually get my Infernal Cape. It only gets easier as time goes on. I mean, I guess. I mean, with Mazoria, it's already like really insanely better. But that's what I mean. Like, I, I've waited this long. Now it's like significantly easier. So there's no reason for me to keep putting it off. Do you have you watched any guides yet on YouTube? I've like kind of watched some guides just vaguely, not uh, not paying too close of attention to them. So I've got the general idea, but I don't have any real set knowledge of like the specifics that you need to do for like how you solve waves and stuff like that all right whenever you're serious about doing inferno you should rewatch this because i'll give you the ultimate tech you oh should boy. watch exact guides like just it's like a really long video it's like a two-hour video watch the whole thing in one sitting then afterwards go into inferno bring a full inventory of sharks or i guess anglers for you Sh anglers and um and uh Peapots. Okay. And then get to the blob waves and just flick the blob until just you have no more it. supplies. Just flick the blob. It'll be it'll, just it'll to look get the idea down. Yeah, because the blob is like the one thing that makes or break your inferno. So once you learn the blob, then go watch Deviate. He has two videos. One is a Tebow walkthrough, and one is a ACB walkthrough. And I think he has a Bofa walkthrough now. So I would watch all three. And he does the Inferno off-tasks, and he explains everything he does and why he does it. 
So he's like, okay, so the melee is here. So if I go here, it's a safe spot. And then he starts killing melee. And he says, okay, this is a bad wave. I'll go here, I'll kind of safe spot it, and then I'll kill the bat. And then I'll do this, and I'll do that. And you just watch it and study it. And after you do that, send the infernal normally, and you'll see you'll be do like much better than the average person. That's my trick for you, my tips. All right, I'll have to make sure to to watch this. Who knows how long down the line when I decide to actually get my rear end gear and start grinding Inferno. Yeah, that's the the deviate videos. Like, I gotta give a huge shout out to him because he helped me a lot for learning Inferno back in the day. So, definitely a solid uh, reference. Thinking of like Inferno and stuff like that, and while we were thinking of um, like old metas getting getting overlooked, do you think they'll ever come out with a better melee cape? Oh, that's a good question. Something I've never really given much thought of until now. Same with, I suppose, Mage Cape and uh, Range Cape as well. I think Mage Cape could potentially make sense just from like where you get it from. You know, MA2 isn't that yeah, complicated. Or... Isn't that going to be the Mage Cape when that comes out? What was that? Blue Inferno. I don't know what it's called. It's like... Um... That's something people have actually been talking about. I hadn't yeah, heard the mods about discussed this. it a long time ago, but uh, I don't know. Interesting. If it's like I don't remember what it's called. Does someone in the chat know what it's called? It's like basically um, it's like a um, survival base. Like there's infinite waves, and you just have to survive as long as you can, basically. And they said, interesting. I think they said something trials. Yeah, it's something trials. Oh, I forgot what the first part is. Tazical trials or something? I thought the whole idea got rejected. Oh, but Solidus is saying that the whole idea got rejected. Unfortunate. Uh, rib. I was looking forward to that. But they were saying that the difficulty would be slightly harder than Inferno, so I guess that makes sense they rejected it because they don't want to add more hard content. Never mind, dude. It got scrapped, I guess. <laughs> rip. I But uh, I, th I don't know. I feel like they, they have been prioritizing easier content a little bit later or at least yeah, content that's have. more beginner friendly for sure with uh toa like because you can still you can still ramp up toa make it difficult and whatnot but definitely the focus of toa was to make it as beginner friendly as possible to help new people try to get into uh try to get into rating so it would be cool if they started focusing on like just brutally difficult content again, but then again, it's like I don't think they will ever do that. I think the yeah, why of, like TOB and Inferno level content is is gone for us. Yeah, why worry about uh, spending all that time creating that type of content when such a small amount of people are going to be engaging with it? Yeah, and then everyone else that's like your majority of your player base doesn't even get to partake. So you're spending yeah, exactly. time for like a minority, which sucks because it makes the game a lot more cool because it gives something to strive for. <clears throat> but at the same time, uh, it's a business, so it makes sense that they do it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a very depressing uh, subject, honestly. It's a bit unfortunate, but, you know, I, I do think they did a good job with TOA where it's like you still got to have some of that spectacle of like watching the highest level players blitz through the content on like insane settings. And uh, so you still got to see some of that where, you know, people are doing solo 500 pluses and stuff like that, doing these insane strategies in order to complete the raid. But then the average player is still able to engage the con in the engage with the content too. So that, that at least I thought was nice. I felt like they at least met a decent balance with uh yeah the the 500 kid i think made it like a more prestigious to do high invitation definitely yes once they added the cosmetics so that uh those people did have something to strive for what are your thoughts on that in general having those cosmetics be invocation level based it's definitely a different to... um like a different approach compared to chambers and top but I, I like it. I think it's cool. Because once you complete the raid, like you're skilled enough to do a 450 or a 500, 
then you get yeah your your voice is buggy i don't know why i was just saying my uh oh wait oh no oh. i thought for a second i might have been on the wrong wi-fi because sometimes my computer swaps over for no reason you're but... good now though so i guess you fixed it yeah, well, it my, looks like my stream dropped again, so I don't know what happened there. I've never had an issue with my stream dropping before. Um, uh, but yeah, but I think uh, the Toa kits are really cool. Like, once you, you're skilled enough to do a completion, you get the kit and it's just banged out. It was also really satisfying to get those kits for the clog. Like, every raid I was doing, I was getting oh, a clog. Yeah. That was really yep. cool. And... Um, and I mean, I still have to push higher invocations too, but even for getting my uh, Missouri kit, like that was a level of satisfaction I haven't felt since probably like getting a fire cape or something like that, where, you know, I was trying, cause I was just doing it solo and, you know, it was several failed attempts before finally being able to, to complete it. And it was very satisfying. Yeah, I, I gotta say, like, the Final Fantasy was similar to Inferno in Satisfaction. It wasn't the same level, but it was really close to it. It was really uh, a sign of relief. Uh, but yeah, D Domas, uh, he just said it can easily be serviced, which I think that's kind of sad. That, that is can... true. I mean, I wouldn't say it's sad, it's just kind of... Like, when you do 1 plus 1. Like, I'm talking about 1 plus 1 service, not, uh, like, you give someone your account. Yeah, like, yeah, of course, level. yeah. But I think that's like a inevitable. So. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that's that it's that way. But whenever there's a content that you can have other people do, even legitimately, people are gonna do that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really honestly like when Toa came out, I really disliked it, and then it slowly built up on me. Well, there was a little bit of a bump for me, too, when they nerfed everything. Yeah, that was beautiful. And then I was like, oh, oh no, I can't just blitz through these at supersonic speed anymore. I thought for sure they, like, Toa was going to die when they did that update, and then they, they reverted it. And they reverted it? I was thinking more of, like, the... Oh, you were saying you thought they were going to revert it. No, but they uh, initially, like, after the first week, they uh, nerfed the core mechanic so you were doing like four to five downs which on p2 which was so aids and they nerfed oh, like yes, everything like yes. they made the the uh, adrenaline pots a lot worse they made the ambrosia as less common but and then they did pull it they pull it back a yeah, little they, they, bit they, they, they gave, it back after like, they gave like slightly more ambrosias and they made it so that core wasn't poor that was by far the worst change that they made in so that stupid. batch was the core <laughs> that was tough i forgot my my brain completely blocked that out of memory i yeah. guess i remember I, I made like i remember i watched a video recently like i was literally like doing a herb run and i'm like yeah guys i think i'm done toa like fuck this this is so bad yeah <laughs> And then the next clip, I'm like, all right, Jax reverted the change. <laughs> <laughs> We're back, boys. Yeah, that that was a, uh, yeah, that was something. What do you think about the Fang nerf? Was that was that a warranted nerf or was that a, a mistake? Uh, I think for its rarity, it was it was probably warranted. I think Fang was a little bit too versatile. If I don't know. Even if Fang was like the rarity of Scythe, I still think it might have been too strong. The fact that it was outperforming like Dragon Hunter Lance in most scenarios, I think, was a little, little insane. Yeah, it was outperforming everything. Dude. <laughs> it was really great. Yeah, exactly. It literally was just the best melee weapon in every scenario. It's basically was the reason why they nerfed uh, Blowpipe. Even was just because Blowpipe was just too good in like every scenario. And I think Fang kind of fell into that same same sort of area. And I mean, it was slightly harder to get in that it was a raids item, but it was still extremely easy to get since it was, you know, one of the most common items from that raid. Um, yeah, it definitely was too common. But even if they made it less common, I think it would have still went to shit because, uh, like, if you look at Toa Uniques now, like, they crash so hard. The Missouri is super cheap. The uh, yeah, Fang it's is just because mil, something like that. 
Yeah. It's because like it has the purple rate of like t- of Tob will being accessible. No, it's as... way crazier than Tob the purple rate. It's <laughs> disgusting. Well, yeah, when you start pushing up to like 400s and stuff like that, then yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's like it's got good purple rate, but it's also extremely accessible. So it's like yeah, just that's, that's pumping the out purples. Like uh, my eight man four hundreds, we see a purple every two raids. Like if we go three raids in a row, white chess, we complain. Like what the hell is this? Where's our purples? <laughs> Never lucky, man. <laughs> it's crazy. And I, that's uh, yeah. I was talking to um Shiba about that. Like the Toa purples. Like at first, Toa was balanced like pretty differently, where like the purple chance and scale too much with invitation levels. And then a lot of high level people were complaining about how experts are not worth doing. Yeah. And then they changed it and they made experts significantly better. And that just screwed up everything. Like it made purple rates way too common from high invitation. Which is fine, but it definitely screwed over the economy. Which I don't give a shit about the economy to be honest with you. But... <laughs> yeah, you're an Iron Man. But it still it still sucks to see it that way. Because I, I know people are not doing Toa because it's less less money. It's still good money, actually. It's still insanely good money. We were I don't know how much it's dropped since. Because I did these calcs probably like a month and a half ago. But I know we were looking into it. And doing 300 TOAs versus 150 TOAs as a main is a difference of like 7 billion GP to 2K KC. So it's like, if you're talking about macro efficiency, it's even it's still better to do 300s, even though they're slightly slower because oh, yeah, you make so sure. much more money that you can funnel into doing clues or something else. It's worth to do 400s even. Yes. It's, it's even more money. That's, that was the next calculation we were doing. And I'm like, guys, you already convinced me to do 300s. I'm <laughs> not doing 400s now. No, but in, in teams, it's not as hard as, as solos. That is also true. Also very true. Like a four eight man 400 is like doing like a solo 320 or something like that. 325. I'd it's, probably uh, believe that. It's that's when you usually go, like, what... fast and it's harder. And like you need everyone to be focused. and. Yeah. What would always get me with TOAs is when I would, uh, like, since I would always be doing them solo, then, you know, one mechanic messes me up or something like that and then just ruins the whole raid because I'm doing it solo, which is a bit annoying. But I did always enjoy doing solos. And uh, I also did the calcs, too, for the GP per hour. And, like, a couple months after release, when uh, 400 teams were, like, kind of hard, you were making around 20 to 22 mil an hour doing Toa back then. Believe that, yeah. And then um, in January, so like five months ago, I was making around 15 to 16 mil an hour from Toa doing eight man 400s. And now I calculated it again, not now, I calculated it again three weeks ago, and it's closer to 12 mil an hour. So it's still good money. But Which it is still pretty wild. A lot. <laughs> I think so. That pro that puts Nex higher, right? Yeah, Nex, Nex is, is still like better, uh, if you do fourteen duos mil trios. for for trios. Is trios the best money making? I play? think duos is better, but it's significantly harder. Yeah. So, but aren't duos also a little bit easier now with? Uh, saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it yeah it, um, I don't like Nex though. Toe is definitely more fun than Nex. Yeah, I have not gotten into Nex. I think Nex is one I'm going to continue to wait off on just because I do not want to do that content. <laughs> yeah, and Curie just said solo 500 is better than Nex. Yeah, solo 500 is actually way better money. Uh, if you, you can do like 40 minutes solo 500s and you'll make like 22 mil an hour today. That is pretty insane. But that skill ceiling for that is pretty high. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 500s are getting pretty wild like there's a guy in our clan his name is heffy he did a uh, solo 500s for um purples and uh he's like he actually shadow. was grinding though. yeah he's done 200 solo 500s if you open his clock he has 200 of the fang the fine kids in his clock it's really cool that's pretty hilarious and i have another friend his name is amethyst her he does only solos and all 500s. He's done over 1,200 solo 500s and above. He's done a lot of solo 570s or 560s, whatever it is without the invitation of the time. 
Like, the guy's a beastie. <laughs> He's a fucking demon. But yeah, that guy has the most 500 hits. But it caps at 250, fun fact. Interesting. That's one that I never would have thought about a cap for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they capped it. That's like such a good flex to have, but yeah. I well, guess. okay, but here's the other thing too. Why is it that something like these kits have a cap at 250, but then items like intricate pouch caps at one? <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's true. That's the real consistency thing I want Jagex to work on, is why aren't some of these items being tracked in the log? Champions uh champion scrolls are yeah, the other one, one too that That's i sad. really wish didn't cap at one and like also like the uh, revenants bracelets they cap at 250 the ether caps at 65,000. the teleports i think they cap at 65,000. there's a lot of inconsistencies there Surely well i think it's 60... like, like something to do with space like in memory space or it must be a reason well, yeah because it's it's the amount of bits that it uses what 256 is Oh, but I should I probably know these off the know. top of my head, but I cannot remember for the life of me. But yeah, they're all multiples of two, so it's different sized integers. But yeah, I wish it's... I don't care if they cap at 250 or 65,000. I just wish more didn't cap at one. That's yeah. more what I, I'm annoyed by. I didn't remember a champion scrolls, but that is kind of sad. It doesn't... It cap That's probably one. the biggest one that I wish didn't cap at one. Because then you can actually, because you get a lot of dupes doing like <laughs> random shit. And it still tells you, you still roll for them yeah, after it gives you've you a already message. done the challenge. Yeah. It gives you a message. So being able to see those in your collection log would be really fun. So, okay, I have another question for you. Okay. If Infernal Capes and Fire Capes were tradable, how much would you buy, pay for your Infernal Cape and how much do you think they would be sold for? Hmm. That's a good question. Honestly, I don't know. I have a feeling they probably wouldn't be worth an insane amount. Because otherwise, then people would just be Farming sending them, yeah, for money. People would just be sending infernos. If they were like a hundred mil, let's say, which isn't even unreasonable like price wise then people would be sending infernos all day making 150 mil an hour or however long it takes when you speed run inferno i don't think they would be more than 20 mil i i think that's probably about right to be honest not because it wouldn't be worth more than 25 mil like upgrade wise but just because it's kind of hard capped by uh, the fact that they actually, for people that are good at Inferno, it's very easy to get them. Yeah, like you get like one an hour if you're very skilled. Doing it on task, like sub 60 minutes is very doable if you're a gamer. Yeah. So 20 mil would still be 20 mil GP per hour doing Inferno, which would be crazy. That would be pretty insane. And then fire capes, I don't know, like... A but there's one more thing too you need that... to consider. Uh, people wouldn't just buy it for their first cape. People would buy capes to trade them in for pet chance. So oh, that would that the would be too. that would be wild. I hadn't thought about that. But I don't know how much it would be. I think twenty mil is like a reasonable. Estimate. All of a sudden, you've got buyable pets now. Yeah. Uh, okay. How about this? How about if master clues were tradable? Master caskets. Sorry. Ooh, but that. caskets are clues because master caskets being tradable is a bit different in my opinion because then they're already completed for you. Yeah, but how much would you be willing to pay for that? <laughs> well, I mean, you can already buy elite clues and nobody's doing that because they don't have the money for it. What would a master actually be worth? Because some people do, like um, the, the funk guy, he buys DMs. I know some people Marnie do. Buys but, DMs. Oh boy! But Marty makes like um, seventy mil an hour. So he doesn't give a shit. About money. That's true. <laughs> Casey, uh, I think Casey was getting a yeah, bunch of. Yeah, he did a lot of them too dupes. back in before the clog too. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a. Uh, I don't know how much master. How much would worth. how much would I pay for a master? What? So, I think average master casket is like. 500k in loot ish so anything on top of that would be loss i want to say 
I don't know, probably would be like two mil for a master casket. Does that seem too low? That's what you would pay. I think they would be worth way more than that, though. I think because just today, if you bought all the clues and made a master clue, it would cost you like 15 mil because of the DMs. Yeah. Yeah, that's mostly from the, the elite. But then again, people would probably do masters and sell the caskets. Like, because if you don't care about. See, that's what, yeah, that's what, that's, that's what I was thinking. Money. Yeah. Doma just says being 20 able to mil. 20 mil. get that every uh, time. That's, I, I'm telling you, like, if this is tradable, people are going to farm them for money. Every time you get the a one, lead, you trade them in for a master, do the master, sell the master casket. The one that I always think of is what if lucky implings were tradable like every oh other God, impling? You can buy clogs. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that I always How much think would that about. be worth? Okay, that's an interesting one too. How much do you think they would be worth? I don't know because they're so rare, but also you have a chance at every single collection log item. They're, You'd be able to they, complete the clue log without ever doing a single clue. Is the a lucky imp rarer than a dragon imp in the uh, in the world? I believe so. I feel like I've case, seen less lucky sure imps more than, than dragon DMs. imps. Yeah, I think you could definitely use dragon imps as like a baseline. What are dragon imps like? Four hundred k. Yeah, but that's because of elites. They're oh, apparently they're ten times rarer. My chat is telling me that. They're 10 times rarer <laughs> than Dragon Imps? Really? What the fuck, dude? They would be worth an insane amount of money then. I'm getting smacked over here. I'm coming by you. Dude, if they're if they're, those are tradable, that would be so cool. It, it would be pretty wild. I mean, it would be horrendous for the collection log, <laughs> but it would be, would be pretty so wild. Shit. But like you buy five and you're basically getting like a good chance of like five rolls on any clue table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember exactly how. I think it rolls. Does it wait? Actually, it might not roll for beginners. No, it doesn't. I think, beginners I think it came rolls out after. easy, medium, hard, elite master. Then afterwards, it rolls a unique on one of those tables. Sounds about right. I remember I got a clog slot once from a random lucky imp. Seriously? And uh, it was an easy clog though. I remember that happened when I was doing tutorial skipping like a long time ago. I think it's one in one of my videos actually, <laughs> in the early episodes. I don't know if I've ever gotten a unique from a uh, from a lucky impling before. I feel like that's something I would have remembered, but maybe not. Is there any other items that if they would be tradable, it would break the game? Oh, like the uh, gold keys from like for shades. That would be cool. That one actually wouldn't be busted. I don't think. Well, it would be pretty would... busted for mates because they would increase their clues per hour so much. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it would just it. I mean, it would just double it. Is it actually like half the time spent burning shades and half the time spent opening? I'd say so, because you have to run all the way down to open up the keys. And you can only do like twenty and eight at a time. If you and... do, yeah, if you do seven tick shades, it's really not that. It's actually relatively fast. Interesting. Never done the meta method, so I have no idea. I actually didn't hate doing shades. It's not bad, but I definitely would not want to do it for like a thousand elite clues, let alone more than that. Yeah, like Sage doing it for fucking completion is <laughs> crazy. Ridiculous. People, people in this game still surprise me all the time, even though I know I should expect the absolute most insane stuff. Still surprised me. Yeah, that guy did a 500 master clue opening recently. I think it took him six weeks. To Sajid it or yeah, whatever Sajid his name is? Last weekend. Wow. It took him like six weeks to, to See, open I, <laughs> I love I love stacking caskets. I'll stack hundreds upon hundreds of caskets. But when it comes to masters, can't keep my grubby little fingers off them. I yeah. gotta open them <laughs> right away. <laughs> <laughs> Only Novas he can do that. Stacks a hundred and opens them all every single uh, couple months. I could not do that. I don't think. But I like ca uh, stacking caskets too. But then I open like all the masters afterwards. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Too. That way, I've got like a little bit of a master stack, but like I don't have to wait weeks or months in order to open them. Yeah, I feel that. All right, so um. 
You want to go to the official macro efficiency for clues? <laughs> that was our general oh, topic. Oh boy, yeah, we were talking about clues, so that's a pretty good transition. Yeah, well, we were talking about it briefly, like when we were talking about things we wanted to talk about, and we were, you were like, hey, so I could come up with all the, you know, macro efficient ways to get clues for irons, you can do it for mains, and I'm like, oh man, it's going to be so much work, <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, no, it's not, it's just implings. Yeah, for mains, it's too easy. I mean, you'd have to there account were... for making money, though, but you could ignore yeah. that. For for most of them, well, not most, for all of them up to elites, you can absolutely just ignore the price because, like, they're kind of pricey. I want to say hard clues are, like, uh, 150. Like 500k, I think, right? For... Oh, is it that much now? Someone told me that. I don't, I don't, it's, I, don't I think it's a couple hundred. I think it's a couple hundred. But you get money loss. back, though, yeah, from the clues. And so. Oh, you're saying that's the price of getting the clue, not including what you're getting from I it. Think that sounds so. that sounds that sounds about right. Um, so like those are pretty negligible for elites, though. It's a little bit less so since they are actually pretty expensive. But um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention too is that for a while there, I was like seriously considering bursting jellies for hard clues even as a main because i could do it in the catacombs and i would get dark totems but now since they changed the jar of darkness drop rate that's not really relevant anymore you don't really have to do something like that uh, unless you like complete konar and you're still missing the jar then you could but, At that point, I'd rather just grind out 200 mil Slayer. Like, oh, yeah. You definitely get more something. totems doing that that way. Like, yeah, you can also just do Venator Bow. Uh, it's really, really chill. It is true. I have heard. I still haven't used it anywhere, but I hear there are a couple places where it's actually really good. It's good for a few Slayer tasks, like Abbey Demons, Jellies. I hear it's also good at, um, Grotesque, at Grotesque Guardians. Guardians. Yeah. It's but really I good still game. don't exactly know what that method is, other than like you kind of kill one of them while the other one's still up or something. Yeah, you start off the fight and then you go to the southeast tile of uh, the range, Grotesque Guardian, and then both of them are going to be next to each other, and then you just bow them and you bow both of them at once. So the first hit hits on Wild. the main one, it then bounces, hits a zero, and bounces back and hits again. Wild. It's pretty cool. It seems like that's a bug, but... No, it's not a bug. It's definitely intended. Because it's meant to bounce on monsters. I just I don't it's think Jax realized it would be strong there, but it's not like a bug. I think it's just an intended uh, use. But yeah, I, I hear it's also good for some other tasks too, where you can just chill doing them. I finally started doing bursting Abbey Demon tasks, and I'm like, holy shit, why haven't I been doing this like years ago? Yeah, it's so OP. It's actually pretty nice. Fun fact, by the way, if you do, um, if you get an Abbey Demon task from like, um, not Conar, but like from Duradel, you can do it in the wilderness with a Ring of Wolf, and then it's a 1 in 600 for Elite Clues. And like a one in sixty four for hards, or one in one twenty eight for hards. So it's actually really, really good. Interesting. But maybe not good still... for mains, but still really good for like really, really good for irons. And you can still burst there, or yeah, you can, it still works. You get you just don't get Laren keys, but you get Slayer XP, Wild. you get superiors and everything. That might be unintended, though. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I guess the main method is really just click impling, make money. Pretty much. There are some other things in there too, like obviously for mostly for elites, like burning shades, which a lot of people do, or now Callisto here for elites. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, for irons, it's. Um... A little different. You just you do hand members for easies. You do piro piro for mediums, which I freaking hope that one day that changes because I hate piro piro. And then for hards, you do a fun fact for hards, by the way, wilderness green dragons with a crossbow is better hard clues per hour than jellies. Really? But it's not sustainable because you need ether. 
wild. It's crazy how much how good, like how uh, much better is it? Not not by much. Interesting. But you get no. like uh, you don't get totems, which kind of sucks. But you get prayer from bones and the hides for GP. Huh. And um, I had not heard of that one before. Another fun fact too. I'm trying to like break the medium clue method, so I'm trying to like theory craft uh, methods. And I mm -hmm. discovered that you can Dinny B spec mammoths in the wilderness with an alt, POH teleporting and obelisking back. And okay. uh, it's only like four mediums an hour, max efficiency, but it's uh, it's really funny. <laughs> That's pretty wild. But it's not worth, I was kind of, and then like I did the calcs to see how much clues per hour you need to get for it to be better than Piro Piro. And you'd have to kill like 1200 mammoths an hour. Which is not really feasible. So, how many? Uh, so, how many is it per hour for Piro for, Piro. Uh, for Piro Piro? Yeah, it's uh, eight point five mediums an hour, including doing them and including stacking them. So mains, I think 8. for mains, 5. it's like twenty two okay. mediums an hour with implings. That sounds about correct with implings. Yeah, it's like two point five times worse. <laughs> it's so bad. There is another method though for uh, Piro Piro from irons. You can like. Uh, Purple Thorax made a video on this. You could like uh, catch uh, the Eclectics and then Dark Lore the baby or the gourmet ones, and you get like zero time easies. Oh, interesting. Okay. But um, no thanks, dude. <laughs> I'll pass. Yeah, I know that um, with that easy or the medium method, you can also kill Fally Guards at the same time you're doing Puro Puro in order to try to increase your mediums per hour as well like but i don't know how many people yeah um, but i don't know how many people work. actually I wonder how do much that much better that would be yeah i've definitely heard of people doing that before and now with the combat achievement diaries it's 60 <laughs> cannonballs. and the increased cannonballs it's slightly more reasonable i feel like but i don't know how many people actually bother doing that that's interesting i might try that out but the uh, cannonballs are not really uh, that sustainable for, unless you like giga macro efficient and you grind like corp green log first. But, yeah, um, or you know, a hundred thousand Callisto. Yeah, <laughs> that's true, dude. They actually that dropped the so main, much cannonballs. <laughs> like that was the main thing I was thinking about when I saw like people's loot trackers that they were sending, and I realized like everyone in here is an iron. I'm like, holy heck, there are so many cannonballs that you're getting, actually. Yeah, Callisto broke the Iron Man method, by the way. Like, it used to be Seracnus. You get an elite yeah. clue every, like, hour. But now with Callisto, you get elite clue every, like, 35 to 40 minutes. And with a Though, good team, Sir it's, like, 30 minutes, even. Seracnus was also nice for some hards in there, too. But yeah. the, elites, the elites are, like, comparable to main raids. Without implings, of course. So it's like actually so much better than anything else there was for irons before. Yeah, I did Seracnus till Green Log, which I went pretty dry for. And uh, but one thing that's crazy too for Callisto, like yeah, you get cannonballs, which is really useful. You get dragon bones for prayer. You get a bunch of money. You get mahogany logs for construction. You get a bunch of herbs back. Like this, this, this boss is actually broken for for irons. It's crazy. Well, I think the other craziest thing is, too, is, like, there is almost no supply input, too, because it drops so many supplies, other oh, yeah, than Ether. Other than the Ether, yeah. But, do, like, that's the one, the one thing, too, I, I stopped using Cross here. <laughs> uh... I saw that you were using... <laughs> is that why you started using ZCB, just because you didn't want to have to upkeep Ether? Uh, well, I have 100,000 Ether in the bank but i did the mm -hmm. calcs and uh going because I, I don't have spindle and uh Vedion pets so yeah, going i for, figured you still had to do those yeah going for those pets i need around sixty thousand ether each to go on drop rate so that's sixty thousand, really yeah that's according to my calcs for that's for the solo variants yeah which uh i have enough for those two so i told myself i would stop and then if i go dry on revs i'll start like or if i spoon one of the pets i'll go back to crossbow but that I think both are sense. slightly better than ZCB, uh, my uh, according to my calcs. Really, I, I don't have a Bofa, so rip. Interesting. I um, I would have figured ZCB would be better with the spec, but yeah, the I guess spec since is you're, better, but not the uh, basic attacks. Well, exactly. But since you're in a mass, you know, the specs are barely doing much to begin with. 
though I have been tempted to try to bring a ZCB myself, but I don't have one yet. So we'll it's figure it out once we get to one. But you don't need to bring it. Like honestly, unless you care about the uniques, I wouldn't bring it. Wouldn't would it be better than bringing? What would you take out the Missouri top for a ZCB? Yeah, you ditch the top and bring ZCB. You would do slightly more damage on average, but um, like uh, you shouldn't really. Like, I don't know. It depends if you're willing to put the extra effort. Like I would mm -hmm. only do it if you wanted uniques. Like if you're gonna leave Callisto when you finished all uniques and greenlock Callisto, then I would bring ZCB. But otherwise, just uh, uh, yeah, it probably Mogul makes Q. sense. <laughs> Crossbow go Berber. <laughs> Kill it. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, Falador tech is interesting. I had an idea where, like, I know uh, Abe, he was doing cannoning goblins for easies and medium and beginners. Yep. And he was getting, like, 20 beginners and 10 easies an hour max efficiency, which is really crazy. Yeah, I remember when... I mean, it was a while ago that I was grinding for my Goblin Champion scroll, but I was just uh, cannoning them in Lumby, and yeah, got a ton of clues. I think I was doing it for a bingo. See, I might, I might, I might start doing that soon. We'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, so. Okay, another fun fact too, and I, we talked about this yesterday when I was high as shit, but um, the jump for Irons from the old meta of Seracnus to Callisto is equivalent to the jump from mains from Shades, assuming that Callisto would give you 4.5 clues an hour. Yeah. Which is I insane. I remember you mentioning that. I'm like, holy heck. That's how much OP this method is for Irons specifically. And on top of that, this method is Giga AFK. Well, like Giga AFK, like it's kind of AFK, and uh, depends you get on where supplies. you stand. Yeah, it depends where you stand. Like if you stand closer to Callisto, it's less AFK. But you get food back anyways. It doesn't matter too much. Yeah, we don't have anybody freezing right now though. So yeah, someone's oh, freezing. We, never mind. We got some. <laughs> they jinxed now. you. We weren't for a second there. I swear. Yeah, I told myself that if I get a hilt, I'll give a 10 mil split to whoever's freezing. But I haven't told that explicitly oh, that's to smart, anyone. actually. Yeah, we should have been... I should have... Uh, we should have had something like that going on. But... Whatever. Oh, someone got the ring! Must be nice, shaking my head. Yeah, I still need that, too. <laughs> So, while we're, I know you've mentioned this a couple times when you were uh, like posting your KC progressions, you always put out of 100,000. Are oh, you yeah. actually going for 100,000? I don't know, to be honest. I'm kind of just memeing, to be honest. <laughs> That's kind of what I figured, but I'm like, <laughs> but I'm it's like, you know, one of those, it. it's one of those memes where it's like, um, <laughs> uh, wouldn't actually go to 100,000, but what if? Like I'm definitely going for green log, that's for sure. I'm Absolutely. not green log. And yet. then you'll reassess you'll reassess from there. Yeah, then I might do like prioritize other shit, but I'll definitely come for like when there's good teams and or if I'm like chilling or if I wanna because honestly, like I've been editing I don't know if you you've you've done it too. Like I've been editing videos while doing Callisto. And it's like it's tough, but it's doable. Yeah, I don't know if I I don't think I can do like the actual putting it all together in my video editor while doing Callisto, but I can do, um, huh? Like trimming okay. clips. But I can do just like trimming clips and getting them all ready to put into my video editor yeah, that's what I do while well. doing Callisto. And it's really not too bad. It's very doable. It's, it's kind of chill. And uh, I also watch a lot of Netflix while doing Callisto, which is really chill too. It's like a, That a definitely. Like, I know a Basilogist, he's the rank one clog. He does Callisto with us, even though it's I not saw that he was. Efficient. I saw that he was in the Discord the other day. And I'm like, wait, is he actually doing Callisto? And he joined on and day somebody, one, dude. <laughs> somebody told me that he was. And I'm like, dang. Yeah, he. I spoke to him. He said that he... Because uh, he has nothing else to AFK, which is kind of sad. <laughs> like, all he has left is Fasani's for Maze. Random events yep. for Steel Baguette, which, like, he, he, he can't grind that. He just kind of... Does random shit and clues and raids for 2k tape. Yep, 
So there's nothing left to AFK. <laughs> I said in uh, somebody had mentioned that today in the Log Hunters yeah, Discord, <laughs> and I and I was like, ah, he should just start uh, leeching plus ones on CMs. Yeah, actually, I considered that a while ago. Uh, there's a um, a Discord that offers to carry you for CM KC. But I think mm -hmm. it's meant for like people doing CAs, like you need to do one CM. Yeah, that's what I would figure. And I think it's but eight what mil if... per KC. And I was thinking, I was, oh, dude, boy. what if I dump my entire profits from two K to a cape into that? <laughs> It'd be so crazy. You know, at a certain point, what else does an iron got to do with their money? You know. Uh, that's true. But speaking uh, of. Uh... Of like carrying people have you done anything with ba yet i don't think um, you have have you i've done 27 gambles like a year ago mm -hmm. i'll be considering it but right now i have like i'm having way too much fun with Callisto and Clippers oh yeah and all that so i that's one that i'm it's always in my back of my head being like i should do this but i always find a good excuse not to for a like, while if there, if you do it was decide that... to do it, you should definitely try to boost people. Yeah, yeah. Well, first I would have to get good at it, and then I could yeah, start yeah, boosting people. But I, I, apparently, it's disgusting money. It's like thirty mil an hour boosting people. It's really insane. yeah. As long as there are people to boost, which yeah, I don't know that, how. Apparently, that's not 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 an issue. There's a I, I wouldn't things. think so, but uh, and also like uh, you could do that. For money and then just dump your money on like dms or something dude that would be great well i've got a lot of other stuff that i need to uh to buy before dms i am a poor man what can i say that is part of the reason why i do want to get back into doing raids actually make a little bit of money preferably uh, yeah that's that's why i'm here too i'm trying to make money for uh like uh when there's new updates to come out i want to be sure i'm like stacked enough that i can afford splits yep and also i can uh, spend the money either like um i was thinking if because i'm still missing the chambers pet so if i finished imagine i finished 2k cape from chambers and i don't have the pet i'm fucked so what i would do is i would dump every single money I have on my main on mega scales and see if I can get a pet. <laughs> oh, that's a thought. It's a, it's a use of the money, I guess. Ethical use of the money. <laughs> All right. Um, any other topics you want to discuss? Uh, well, we went over pretty much... I don't think there are any other unique or interesting clue metas, are there? Mm. Uh, I will really. say, the last the last thing about clues is that I do wish there were more bosses that were just kind of like Callisto or Seracnus. They don't even have to be as good as like Mass and Callisto, even if it's just like Seracnus, where it's like... They don't give an insane amount of clues per hour. They just give like a good amount of clues per hour. Nothing meta defining or anything like that. It's not game breaking, just solid clues. Did you see uh, this, the Hey Jay's proposal for clues? No, I don't think I did. You haven't seen it? He proposed where um, like they would change the drop rates for clues on all bosses to make it more consistent. Because, for example, right now, Fasani Nightmare, you get an Illy Clue every, like, eight hours. Which is kind of gross. But something like Seracnus, you get a clue every 50 minutes. But then something like KQ, you get a clue every six hours. Like, it's not... And I think God Wars, it's every 10 hours. Like, some of them are not really balanced. So he proposed a change where, like, you try to average out Illy Clues per hour to, like, maybe one every two hours for every boss. I would be so down for that. I think it's a cool idea, but... Like, it's, uh, I don't know, it's a slippery slope, you know? <laughs> like, a little bit, but I think encouraging more just, like, passive clue grinding is the way to go. Yeah, I, I, I think they should definitely change the ones that are disgustingly OP. That are not, like, disgustingly horrible, I mean. 
Like yes, like agreed. next or like not next. Sorry, uh, like nightmare being one every six hours or whatever. They should probably make that more like one every two hours, and fix the ones same, that are average, that are okay. Same with um some of the older bosses that like KQ seems like they don't you don't really have a good reason to do some of those bosses. So giving them slightly better clues per hour would at least give you a little bit of a reason to not hate them. And you'd also get a lot more clues zero time going for green logs. So you'd like yeah, exactly. like reduce the time needed to do shades. Yeah. So do you think someone's gonna complete the collection log? Oh boy. That's a good question. I feel like it's one of those things where it's borderline inevitable, even though it's impossible. Because I think I just mentioned earlier where I'm like, every single time that I think somebody's too insane to do something in this game, they end out doing it anyway. <laughs> but there's RuneScape is so popular too that there's always going to be new content coming out, which is going to make it constantly harder to complete the collection log. But at the same time, it's going to make it slightly easier in some ways too because it means that there are new methods coming out for old annoying or difficult content so i don't know i feel like it's really could be it really could go either way i feel like i think it'll be completable but not by an iron there's no shot an iron's gonna finish the clog i would probably agree with you there but I think a main is going to be able to do it, and it's going to be a main that gets Giga Lucky on clues on the third age. And uh, also, you have to remember that like new updates can affect the meta for clues. Like, for example, yeah. the uh, Elite CAs used to not count for shades. Then they yep. made the change. I don't remember when, a couple months ago. And that's a Yeah, 5 that was a pretty buff. ridiculous one. And if you calculate like, the EHC rates, it's around 60,000 hours you have to do clues out of the 70,000. So 5% of 60,000 hours is pretty nuts. That's like 3,000 hours just shaved off. That's a year. Yeah, that's not bad, I suppose. So I think like <laughs> long, like over time, we're either going to get better ways to get clues or clues are going to be faster. Well, I think the other thing that I'm that I'm expecting to make a big shake up is when they eventually add Grandmaster clues because I think that's also inevitable. Oh, yeah, if that has third age, then rip. I think that's going to be what streamlines third age completion to a point where the collection log is completable. Like you think it's not going to add new items? It's, it's just going to have third age rates like I, on crack? Well, I, I think it'll still add new items, but it's going to make existing third age significantly easier to complete while not adding insane third age to get itself or something. It's third age. will either There will either be less of them or they'll be more reasonable to obtain. Because that can go two ways. Because if one, they add that with insane third age rates, like where it's really easy, or easy in, in quotations, that'll save a lot mm -hmm. of time. But if they add rare third age items on those tiers... Yeah, then, then you just, just have the rip. same problem. <laughs> one more up, yeah. You have the same problem, but now you have more tiers to worry about. <laughs> Here's Here is the big question, because I do... I assume Grandmaster Clues are coming eventually. But how do you think we would get Grandmaster clues? Would it just be like Masters, where you get a Grandmaster from a Master? Do you think they'd add them to, like, raids content, maybe? Because I feel like it's not sustainable that you'd only be able to get them from Masters, unless you got them from Masters and Elites, because that's what one a guy in my, uh, my chat was asking about. That's a good approach. I a mean, good approach is getting them from Masters or Elites? Yeah, or like if... Or I would say even just masters, like a one in five chance to get one from a master. But then the issue with that is that knowing that fact, should I not open my masters anymore and just stack them? Oh boy. Because <laughs> that's another approach too. Yeah, maybe I should start stacking masters. You're right. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing that. But technically, you should. Like I know, um, like one of my friends, he's opening all his eggs, his uh, keys from Konar and Willy Slayer until he gets one unique. And then he stacks everything else in case they change mm -hmm. the dupe prevention from those. Well, to be fair for the um, for the Grandmaster clues, they do make it so that you can't stack clues before yeah, new items come out. So 
uh, it's very possible that they could do the same thing for Grandmasters too. I hope they do that to be honest, because that's cringe having the stack masters. If they yeah, if they did do if they did do grandmasters from elites and masters, I would agree. I would probably not want people to just be able to have a, a large stack that they go through and get a bunch of grandmasters right away. What do you think the requirement steps for like a grandmaster clue would be? Like what if there's I a step think... where it's like you have to do an emote? Uh, wave 68 of Inferno with oh, like three boy. random items. <laughs> now that would be something. I was going to say, I feel like there are already a couple that you need for masters that are like 90s. So I don't think it would be unreasonable to say like one of them would be a 99. Use the fire making cape emote or something like that. Like one of the easier 99s. Yeah, that'd be cool. They can definitely like push it to the limits. Like they can even like a. Uh, I remember uh, one of my friends, uh, Curry, was saying we could have, like a. Uh, imagine you get the the step, and it says defeat Vorkaf. You have two minutes, so then you run to the bank. You gear up. You go to Vorkaf. You kill it. And if you don't kill it in time, your clue scroll disintegrates and you lose it. Interesting. Maybe not two minutes. That's a little rough. Maybe like five minutes, but you get the you get the concept. Yeah, that would be. That'd be so crazy. I don't know how I feel about that, but that would definitely add a new level of chaos to doing clue scrolls. That's for sure. Yeah, you'd have to have um, like really good like uh, inventory tags and like uh, fast gear switching and all that to gear up quick. Yeah. Or um, I was gonna say maybe even like a PB time, but I don't know if that's something like um. You know, kill Vorkath in under a minute or something like that. But yeah, I don't know if cool that too. would be if that would be something that would be good for it. I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> Trexy just said, as a clue step, you should do a Slayer Cape emote in front of a superior. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that's so cringe. There was I know I I don't look at O Seven Scape Reddit anymore, but um, I know there was one not too long ago. Yeah, I read where. That one. That was good. What was that? I read that Reddit post. It was really funny. the one where it was. What's the worst? Uh, what's clue the step. worst clue step you could think of? There were some real oh, good some ones. Brutal in there. ones, like <laughs> I don't remember which one. One of them made me laugh so hard. It was like the. It was like equip a two K Toa cape. Equip like a bunch of. Like, oh God! <laughs> like what the hell? Dude? A while ago, I was putting together a spreadsheet for, um, I was putting together a spreadsheet for like best in slot collection log flexing. So it's like, what are the hardest untradeable items to get that you could wear in each slot? What's the answer? I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've still got the spreadsheet around here somewhere if we wanted to take a peek. Would it be like Dragon Full Helm? No, because Dragon Full Helm's tradable. Oh, I'm an Iron Man perspective. Look. <laughs> yeah, it's different for an Iron Man. I guess for an for a main, you'd have to do like the 2500 Bounty Hunter hat. That's probably the rarest hat of the game. Interesting. I, I don't know if I had that one on there, actually. And then you'd do like the Champion's Cape? No. Uh, 2KCMs. Oh, yeah, oh, bro, of course. Fucking cook. <laughs> 2kcm still no that's tradable damn it well, making it tradable makes it like less fun yeah but at the same at the same time though i feel like it's it's interesting because we know what a lot of some of the harder collection logging grinds are so then trying to think of what the hardest ones are well untradable makes it kind of interesting but here's what we've got oh, helm sack too helm oh, is bad. Kanzanite slash magma helm. Uh, I guess that is rare, but I think the 2.5k BH tails is way rare. Yeah, probably. I hadn't thought of that when I was looking at. I don't think this is on the. That's on the list. But it's not a clog uh, too yet. Maybe it might be a clog soon though. But it's not a clog. Oh, right true. Didn't think about that. Uh, Amulet of the Eye, Xerix Champion. That's from that's Decorative... from JOTR Amulet of the Eye. What was that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I from that. Guardians of the Rift. And then... Xerix Champion. The Castle Wars Decorative. top and bottom. Castle Wars top and bottom. 
the weapon I have is the phasmatic flag, which I don't know if that's actually right. That's the 6,000 pieces of eight one? Yeah. I have that over golden tench. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Uh, uh, decorative golden tench is pretty quick compared to the 6,000 pieces of eight. Probably true. Then um, decorative shield but that's also Castle Wars. So then in order to have it only like one item from each from each piece of content, I have Abyssal Lantern on there, I guess. Then Hollowed Grapple, Superior Mining Gloves, Dark Flippers, Celestial Signet, and for pet, I have Bloodhound, but I don't actually know if that's the longest pet to get. Uh, I think I it think is. Penance Queen might be longer, but I'm not sure on that. Well, it depends if you consider the imps. That's also probably true. That's funny. I remember there was a Reddit post a year ago. Uh, one of my friends, Sally, sent it to me. It was like the uh, best in slot flex. and uh, But it had like an That's Iron Man version. kind of what I was going for there a little bit, but from like a collection log perspective. Yeah, it looks those those kits looked sick. Like, like the guy had like two K caves, oh. Zuck Helm, and like a bunch of like insane gear, Torvo and all that. It looked really cool, but yeah, different. Uh... Trying to do too many things at once. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna slap the Callisto. Our team is like half gone. <laughs> We're five. Oh. I might just like join another fucking world. I don't like being low teams. Uh, if you do exclamation Callisto in the chat, then it should link you to Lone Jim Rat's video. I guess I just spelled Callisto wrong and I don't know how to spell, which honestly should have been expected at this point. Two L's. It always gets me. <laughs> but cool. Thank you, Terror. Glad somebody's got my back here. Ow. So, um, you want to talk about YouTube now? Sure, I suppose. It's always fun to chat about YouTube. Yeah, it's cool to chat to other content creators about it. What about? Uh, I don't know. What about? <laughs> what's your <laughs> What's your process of editing a video? And then what's your process of baking a thumbnail? And what's your process of picking a title? Oh, boy. Okay. So I guess first off for editing, there's really not much of a process for editing, to be honest. Usually I'm just like recording clips as I'm getting items or I have something to say about what I'm doing. Then I'm just tossing it all together, adding an intro, outro, and that's pretty much the video. Don't do anything too crazy. Yeah, I think I'm around the same thing as well. It's why I'm... You're in the content creator Discord, right? The small. Yeah, you have to make sure you yeah. emphasize a small content creator Discord. <laughs> yeah. We don't have Bodhi or anyone in there. Um, so in there, talking with them helps a lot for just content creation in general, but it also makes me realize when they're like, I don't know what to make for my video. And I'm like, huh, I always know what I'm doing yeah, for we my don't video. Have with that. <laughs> it, it might not be anything interesting. I might just be, you know, like opening up easy clues for 10 minutes straight, but I always know what my video is going to be. So that's, that is like both a blessing and a curse because on one end, it means that like, I never feel like I'm playing RuneScape enough, which can be a problem sometimes, because it feels like I can always be playing more to get more content. But uh, at the same time, it also means that I don't have to like sit down and think, okay, what am I doing for my next video? Which is very nice. Yeah, I guess we don't. I know, like the uh, other people, the other content creators in that Discord, they're like actually thinking about like unique videos, like PKing ideas, and like yeah, like what's what is the uh, you know what's interesting right now? What are people engaged in? And I'm like, man, I've been doing I've been doing 
collection login for the last forever now. And we're just like, yeah, I'm going to do an episode of me clicking there. Yeah. Episode of me at Toa. Like, there's no... Oh, man, uh... there are three people in here. Are we going to consolidate... Um, yeah, I went to the squad? other world. Okay. Just join the other world for now, I guess. It's uh, not much we can do. Exclamation Callisto, if you guys want to join, by the way. Everyone's asking me, like, what's the CC? <laughs> Yeah, I finally set up one myself so that people can have an idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really surprised how well the Callisto has been going. Like when I, I set this up last month, at the beginning of the month, and I was like fully expecting like a, a good probability that this would flop. And I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll give it a shot. And then as soon as I uploaded the video, like we formed a team within like five minutes. Everyone joined the, dis the, the Discord, they're like, holy shit. This is possible. <laughs> and there was a bunch of like big gamers too. Like I remember Basilicus was there on the first day. We had like C7 from Olympus. We had a uh, Barter joined us. It was really cool. Nova C joined us too. A bunch of top page cloggers joined us. But yeah, I'm surprised it's still going. I thought for sure it was gonna fail. But yeah, my YouTube process is like, I just collect clips and I have like a really long backlog, which is bad and good at the same time. I have right now, <laughs> I have like a 2.5 month backlog. There are both pros and cons for it. Yeah, I was um, talking to Tans about it. It's, uh, he thinks it's not a good idea. Like uh, he has a backlog too, but he like uh, shuffles his timeline a little bit. So like if a new boss comes out, he's gonna prioritize that, those clips, because like that's the, that's the thing that I lose out on. Whenever there's new releases, my videos are outdated, so I don't get like a day of video about the new boss. So that's not good for like reach. But the pros is that like I'm planning to go on a vacation soon. I can schedule three videos, go on vacation, not worry about it. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have a little bit of a backlog. That way you've got some wiggle room in there. But I would say you probably ideally would only be behind by like maybe week. like two weeks or something yeah. like that and then it's like tans like... was saying trying to like maybe shuffle around what order things are in so that um so that you don't have to so that you get in on new content while it's fresh and everybody's interested in watching it but it varies sometimes too because um my musfa video did pretty poorly but i mean most of most of the videos that have done the best for me are on new content but also usually the skilling bosses i don't know if it's because people cover those less i think that's so because musfa was like heavily covered on release because everyone was able to do it yeah but then like uh my temporis video was one of the first videos i had that really blew up and even my guardians of the rift video is sitting at one of my best performing videos views wise hmm, that's interesting. so i guess people not as many people cover those and if they do they aren't doing something crazy like you know thousands of pulls within a week or two of it coming out yeah or they're not like actual cloggers slash skillers yeah hmm, interesting but I will say the um, low level, I don't know how to call it, low level content creator discord. I guess beginner content creator discord has been really yeah. useful. Like the emphasis oh, it's they put so, on the thumbnails is really So important. nice. That's what I was going to say, especially when talking about uh, thumbnails. So nice to be able to talk to other people and be like, hey, does this make sense? And the other thing too is um, not just about that, but also uh, talking to content creators in other niches because I'll do something for a thumbnail where I'm like, this makes sense. And any other person who does like collection logging content, they'll be like, that makes sense. And then one of the other people in the content creator discord will look at it and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and yeah. it's like, yeah, you know, the you, clogging, you, everyone's familiar with clogging, right? Okay. I, I gotta say though, some of the guys in there, their thumbnails are fucking crazy level, dude. I cannot believe how good some of them are. I'm yeah. like, man, maybe one day. I I will give respect to Tansfang. I've been kind of like imitating his his thumbnail um, patterns, and I asked him about it. He says it's okay. By the way, I didn't actually just hear me. <laughs> I 
everyone but, cancel Lone Jim Rat right <laughs> now. He's stealing content from smaller creators. Dude, what do you mean smaller? He's literally I bigger than he's got like <laughs> twice your size. <laughs> but I think Tan's his thing has been like blowing up lately. Yeah, I think. he's been. I think his thumbnail game is like one of the best ones for cloggers. It's so simple, but it's so, so good. simple. Yeah, it's, it's so simple and it's so good. Like it's just that's what I'm trying to strive for. I uh I didn't even really mean to like copy him on the most recent thumbnail that I did, but I kind of did, where it's just like a stack of brimstone keys with uh like 123 on it, because that's how many I had stacked. And the video started out within like the first hour, it was ranked nine of ten or something like that. And I'm like, man, Fuck. that sucks that it's doing horribly. And it came back after. And then like carry. Yeah. And then like a couple hours later, it was at like five. And I'm like, okay, it's doing fine. We're all good. And then I wake up the next morning and it's one of one of ten. And I'm like, what the Okay. I guess you know, the second that I put the least amount of effort into a thumbnail, it just pops off. Oh, I just hit 9,000 Callisto. I didn't notice. Damn. Nice. nice, man. Nice. Okay, I clipped it. Someone in the chat was like, Grats 9,000. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I missed I it. I would be pretty... Did you did you hit rank one then? You yeah, mentioned rank one something right now about for it. Callisto. Overall or just irons? No. O- o- uh, overall, I don't even think I'm top page. Oh, okay, I, gonna, I, thought I, I thought I looked the other day and I thought that, yeah top page for mains was all 10k plus but i couldn't remember uh for mains i'm rank 56 oh my gosh dude mains love callisto i guess i guess so man yeah i'm rank one for irons which is really cool but i don't think i'll be able to maintain it because there's a few irons in the uh in the discord that are go that go way harder than me yeah and they're gonna keep at it because they don't have content that they need to make but like I was thinking about it, like um, because right now I'm averaging around a hundred elite clues every three weeks from Listo. I know you mentioned that, yeah. So that would be like a, every three weeks I'll have like a clues girl opening video, which is crazy, by the way. Yeah, for like for that's... iron level, that's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty cracked amount for mains, even let alone for an iron. Oh, for mains think... with shades, it's like very feasible. Yeah, but I mean, even Hey Jace, Hey Jace goes ridiculous on the clues and i still think he only does like 150 every two weeks yeah but he's also a uh, kind of burned from elites from shades probably from, uh, i think it was domas that said that to me or someone told me about that which i don't blame him because those uh, they look kind of rough but yeah i think probably just clues in general maybe he's a little burnt on he did do thirty thousand hard <laughs> clues <laughs> that was insane dude i was watching literally... a lot of those streams he did like 350 hards every week for like two years straight and that was back when the implings were like really cheap like uh, like if you think about it like he was really smart about doing it he actually saved so much money doing that i wish i got into doing clue scrolls a long ass time ago but and and i remember when he switched he even said like uh the the hard clues are getting too expensive i'm gonna go to elites and no way yeah i remember him saying that he was nope, like literally. Um, I just got a hilt, actually. Oh, you got a hilt? No, dude, what the fuck, <laughs> bro? Well, grats, ninety mil. Buy DMs. That's with that. uh, that's, that's not five so bad. elite clues. <laughs> that's funny, dude. <laughs> was that a clog? Yes, that is a clog there too. <laughs> Holy. Well, shit. First time. Okay. Minute. Yeah, derailed us there for a second. How selfish of me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I will really say, cool. that's that's one thing that I like. also kind of hate about Callisto, too, is that like you don't get to see when other people pull stuff. Oh, you do. Uh, you need to use a chat filter plugin. And uh, if you look in the general in the, the Discord, I pinned the message. Okay. And uh, if you set it up correctly, like I see in my chat, Camping Online got a Void Waker and I got 11 Dragon Bones and that's it. Oh, that's okay. That's nice. Is it only over a certain value or is it um, like unique? I, how does that work? Just over a certain value? And what well, shows your own loot only if it's like an untradeable. 
Okay. And not untrade, untradeable or uh, above the um, valuable drop threshold. Okay, gotcha. So I set my threshold at 5k. So sometimes I don't see the loot, like if it's mine, if it's under 5k, but it's not, it's like only a few items. Gotcha. I'm going to have to set that up then, because that is the one thing that annoys me sometimes, is I'm like, I'll randomly start seeing people be like, GZ, GZ, yeah, GZ. I know. And I'm like, what? And then I have to like squint and I'm staring at all of the, the things in the filter being like, huh, I wonder uh, who got what now. Yeah, they definitely didn't take that into consideration, the fact that you would get so much, so much items in, in masses. But yeah. Okay. Back to what were we talking about? We were talking about clues. Yeah, hey Jay's grinding hard when they were like actually. I think I think he was he still losing money back then. I don't know. Uh, he was probably it was probably like about even. Oh wow! Because now it's a big loss. Yeah, now it's like a huge loss. Uh, that's crazy. I was uh I was just doing some hards from implings myself for like the first time because there was a guy who donated like 150 mil to me for uh, and told me to buy implings i'm like don't have to tell really? me twice holy shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i was doing a bunch of hards and i put a bunch of it into gorm oh speaking of impling prices gourmets are out of control right now it's yeah that's for easies, right i think that's because of Bowie yeah. though he got into clues and and plings and then was like getting into it. Yeah, they are at forty six hundred GP each right now. They're when one in twenty five for easies or one in fifty? Uh one in twenty five. So it's not it's still not too bad. You get them pretty quick from opening up the jars, but oh man. Yeah, but it's, it's you lose a lot of money. It's a big loss now. I always used to say that I'd like probably about broke even on implings because I would try to be smart with selling them. But um, yeah, I it's it's tough now. Please cry for the mains who are buying. Uh, Please uh, make bot farms and collect. We have it so tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's kind of nuts. That it, I, I know, like um, ever since Bodhi started doing clog, all the implant prices have been rising like crazy. Probably. But I, I honestly feel like Implings should have been untradeable. I'm sorry, I'll say it. I know it's going to offend a lot of mains, but I feel like they should have remained, they should have remained untradeable. Yeah, it definitely like completely altered the course of collection logging for forever. For mains, yeah, I just broke the entire collection log method. Because if, if Implings weren't the thing, <laughs> mains would do the exact same thing as Irons. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, not, not Shades. You would still do Shades for... Uh... Yeah, that is true. Yeah, you, shades would be different still, at least. But other than that, yeah, it'd be pretty much all the same. But oh well, it is what it is. Imagine seeing mains thieving ham members for their easy clues. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I who was it? Was it um? I'm a drum did a bunch of th ham thieving for his easy clues just because yeah, he wanted he does, to. He does all the, ma the iron methods because he finds And I'm like, iron. oh man, that does that sounds rough to me. I would not want to have to thieve hams. Yeah, Domas is like, yep, lol. <laughs> <laughs> he also did jellies. I know I saw the uh, his video a couple days ago about the uh, Venerable jellies. Like I said, I was, I was considering jellies before the um before the jar of darkness change to be fair i feel like it had a spot uh, i think the main reason why i like callisto as opposed to like jellies and other things for clues is because you get boss kill count and the boss again is something that everyone can see yeah so you kind of just like like people like i remember um last night i wrote in the cc like casey callisto i was like 8700 kill count Yep. And I said, no Void Waker. And everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know all trios. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, solos. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Yeah. Do you, Have you run the calcs on, assuming 10 people for all of them, have you run the calcs on what expected completion is? Uh, it's all around the pet. 
because uh, the pet is like the much rarer item. And, yeah, because uh, all the all the other ones are only like what one in one in one in sixty for the uh, Void Waker, one in five twelve for the ring. Yes, so in, a, in a ten man, that's like one oh, in wait. five thousand. Ring is ring is rarer than the health. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it is. Really? Okay. And then isn't like D pick one in 150, 200 or something? Uh, I don't remember the D pick, but you shouldn't even worry about that for completion. You're, you're, you're oh yeah, of course, of course not. I was just thinking about other uniques. Um, because I thought I remembered seeing another one that was like one seventy or something. Oh, is that for the um the claws? The claws is one in one sixty. It's very very common. Okay, that's what it was that I was thinking of. But the other thing too about the uh, drop, like it's all around the pet for completion. And the other thing too is like, according to my preliminary data collection, I think the scaling is a little fudged. You know how if you do one damage, you still get 15% reward potential? Yes. I think the same thing applies to the uniques. And I think that's accidental by Jidex. Uh, if like, if you do one damage, you, it always rounds up to 15% reward potential. And I so think the you're unique saying... chance scales to that. So you're saying in a 10 man, on average, we probably have like 150 to 170 percent reward potential. I think so. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, we've seen like like a for my current KC, I'm 9,000 kill count, so we should have seen 4.5 pets, but I've seen like over 10 pets. Yeah. So I think the pet rate is around one in 13,000 in a 10 man mass. Interesting. Which is still really horrible. Like if I'm just gonna emphasize, if you want uniques. Mass Callisto is donkey tech. You should not be doing Mass Callisto. You should be doing... Yeah, it's RDA. definitely more for the elites. And then you get the passive collection logs. And it's still, what, like 2 mil per hour? Even it's, assuming... Um, 4 mil an hour, including the, like the uniques on raid. Really? Yeah, but that doesn't consider like supply cost and downtime and all that. There really aren't any supply costs, to be fair. But yes, there is a decent bit of downtime sometimes, or sometimes you're running like subpar teams. Yeah, or like people are not in the room, so you're doing like a six man, eight man, then it's less. Than yeah, hour. exactly. And if you when you're doing your clues, obviously you're not making money. I mean, technically you get your money from elites. I did, I don't really factor that, but yeah, yeah, it's a uh, four mil an hour. But the the other thing too is if you get unlucky on hilts, the GP per hour is really worse. Like, I know farming Arma has done, like, I think he's gotten four hilts. Was he the one that I saw the other day in the Discord? Where, yeah, he was, like, it was only a couple thousand KC, but he had, like, 350 mil in loot. <laughs> he's more loot like, than me, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think you said he's, like, this man's casually averaging, like, 10, 10 mil, mil GP per hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, one of my friends, UG, he was learning solo chambers. He got two Tebos with an 100 kill count. He was averaging 20 mil per hour. And I was like, bruh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Doing straight up OTB solos. out here. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, it's kind of nuts. UG just wrote lol. Uh, you can share the video, uh, Curie. Just do exclamation Callisto. And if they want to join, they have to view the video. And then if they're willing to view that, they're probably not a peak here. <laughs> <laughs> do you... So do you actually have, like, a link to the Discord in that video? Uh, yeah, but, like, you have to, like, kind of watch the okay. video and all that. I was... Because I wasn't sure when I was sending people over to that video. I just I just kept sending that to them whenever anyone asked. And I wasn't sure if you actually said in that video or not. Yeah, it's in the description. And in the video, I showed the method. And then when you join the Discord, like the first couple channels, it's like, uh, you know, it explains the role, the gear setup yeah. and like the general explanation. Like it's definitely evolved. Like at first we weren't like we would wait for eight people, then we would send. And then eventually we had an issue where we had like 12 people and we had two extra people. So then we had to do a waiting line setup. And then when you were waiting in line, it was kind of awkward. So then we started deciding, okay, we're going to split into two teams when we get over 15 people. But then that gets awkward because then you're doing like six man sometimes. It's really For, hard uh, to balance. It, it really is awkward. And the, like the two elite clues per hour, that's like, that's feasible. But you need like a 10 man team going 
and they have to peel you. So like imagine if like you guys are peeling me, you're doing a 10 man. I get a clue, I do it, someone takes my spot. I come back, someone leaves and, then somebody and I take leaves. I take their spot. Yeah. But like no one's gonna wanna do that because like that's like uh like if you're here you wanna kill Callisto, so yeah, because no then also, do. then you're not factoring in other people doing their elites, too. Yeah, that too. And I calc that 12 people is the, like, perfect number, because on average, an elite clue takes you 6 minutes to do. And uh, in a 10-man, you're bound to get a clue every 5 minutes. So you should have a... Oh, I just got a clue. Wow, speaking of that. So, like, in theory, you should have, like, a perfect cycle of two people doing clues... They come back, and as soon as they come back, chances are someone else gets a clue, and it just cycles through. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, some I've got other a nice... people join, and then it just, you know, the 13 people, then not that doesn't work anymore, and so on. Yeah, I've got a nice clip of me waiting outside the caves for 15 minutes that yeah, I'm going to put my in my next as well. video. This is so cringe. <laughs> it's tough. But yeah, I've noticed that you guys have been pretty consistently getting two teams going during the day while I'm at work. And I'm like, damn, there are a lot yeah, of people I'm doing Yeah, I'm surprised this. about that too. Uh, like, um, definitely, like, uh, the first time we tried two teams, it went to shit. Like, we were like 14 people, that. we did two teams. And then the team that, like, the first team, everyone got clues. And then we were just running, like, two <laughs> so formats. down to, like, three people. <laughs> yeah. It was really bad. I have seen that a couple times where you're like, we're running two teams. And it's like, oh, we're at like plus two on each. And it's like, okay, that's like perfect. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I see plus, plus seven. four, <laughs> plus six. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no. It's tough. And the other thing, too, is some people, they join and they don't do clues. They just kind of kill the boss. Ridiculous. Heathens, Which, all of them. Yeah, that's 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 war crimes. We'll, we'll say or I do, uh, to be fair, I do know some of them. They'll get their elites and then they'll trade it in for a master and then come right back and get another Oh, yeah, that, that's elite. fine too, though. That's Which, perfectly fine. That's, under, that's a little bit more understandable. It's the same thing, actually. Like, you're, you're doing it for, for clues. Yeah, Which, you're, still really using, smart, you're still the using the clues. Because you can stack three masters and then get three elites and chuck them to Watson and run straight back. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's... it's, it's like, I was going to actually scrap the idea at one point, too, because it was getting too hard. Where am I going? It was getting too hard to manage, and and I was scared that, like, PKers would rag us, but mm -hmm. we're able to fight them back most of the time. And if, because there's, like, two types of PKers. There's a PKers Another that, that like, they come into us and they fight us for fun. And if we fight back, they're going to love it. They're going to keep coming back. Yeah. And there's other PKers where if we fight back, they're like, oh, shit, these guys fight back. I'm done. And they leave. And just insta dip. I know that one of the first PKers that we saw, we had a 10 man, and then uh, a, PK, a solo PKer drops in, <laughs> takes one look at all of us, and just runs to yeah. the other side of the cave. <laughs> I remember that. What's funny too is some PKers they don't they don't understand like the mechanics of skull sculling, so they I barrage. Saw yep. And then you DD on the person they're barraging, so they hit you, and then you you start attacking. Them. I saw you do that on your last podcast, actually, where you were doing Callisto. And I'm like, damn, that's smart. Yeah, but some PKers, they, they know, and they, they ice blitz instead. So it doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. But when it does work, it's really satisfying. And then it's it's actually kind of crazy how good Cross is at, like, anti-PKing. Yeah. Not like, it's not like you're going to deal enough to just, like, absolutely shred them or something but you get enough chip damage in there that it flusters them especially if they're not expecting it i got especially a few if you got a couple people really doing fun. it there's also a few people in our uh, discord that they just pk like they like fully for example he uh he comes in in rag gear with a toxic staff yeah and uh every time he cares he always skulls up and kills them and uh, yeah, he's there was... made bank, dude. He's made bank killing PKers there. He, uh, oh, I believe he, that. He, he smited a Karasi a couple weeks ago. <laughs> from no <the> way. <laughs> and he Damn. PKed some other guy for like 50 mil at one point. He's made like over, more money anti-PKing at Callisto than Callisto itself. <laughs> it's really... <laughs> but he's a good PKer it must... too, though. So. It was probably him that I saw. We were, re... we were like re-gearing after a PKer came through and he came... And he was sculled, and I just like out of habit insta logged out. But then I realized that he was in the in the friends chat. I'm like, oh, dude, spooks he, me he's there for a, a second. Beast too. 
Because at first, when he first joined, I was kind of suspicious. Because I like, like, oh, like, this this PKer is trying to join us. Well, he's really like an now. unscald with like a freaking AGS and RCB. Like, hmm, kind of sus, you know. And then at one point, I think it was Barter, Master Barter. He accidentally scold with Cross, Missouri Top, Anguish, and Armahelm. And I was like, oh no, this guy's gonna scold up and try to kill him. Yeah. And he, he 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 like told Barter like, dude, what the fuck? Go bank now. And he escorted Barter to the 30 line, and then they both tell you wow, together. And what I was a guy. like, as soon as he did that, I was like, yeah, this guy's getting a general and vouch rank. Like, I don't care. <laughs> that guy's good. That guy's good. <laughs> was that an iron who accidentally sculled? Yeah, it was a Barter. Yeah, that would be Ranked pretty tough iron. if he lost. That would be a tough way to lose your cross. He's got dupes. He's got like 35 armor helms, too. <laughs> that, guy's <laughs> oh, a, that guy's a demon, <laughs> Do you know who he is? I feel like I've seen him around. He did like 10,000 armor for the pet without a Tebow. He caught black chins for every single armor kill. Oof. He's like 160 million hunter XP. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, how many chins <laughs> is that? Jeez. And he's at 48 pets. Fire caper. Respect. He's a he's a beast, dude. Is he actually rank one armor? I mean, I I don't see how he would not be honestly. I don't know. Well, rank one. If he's an iron, he's almost certainly rank one for irons. He's rank one armor. Eleven thousand six hundred armor kills. He also has overall 10, or just for iron. He's rank one sire too. <laughs> Damn. What the fuck? Ten thousand sire. I remember he. Uh, I think he got like 18 bludgeons or something like oh no more than that good lord like 36 bludgeons i don't something disgusting dude i don't remember uh sire is one that scares me i swear like every content creator that i've ever watched for collection log goes dry on unsireds yeah that's a, so i'm not a excited point. for it so all of a sudden when i went 3x for my first unsired i'm like uh, oh boy i'm not gonna start complaining yet but oh this is this isn't looking good there's a new meta for a Sire, by the way. You just shadow camp the whole thing. The whole thing, really? Yeah, apparently, it's like it's like pretty good. It's uh, better than um, Fang, and it shreds the vents. By the way, it destroys the vents. And yeah, I've been using I've been using Sire shadow too. for the vents. I didn't know that you could use it for the actual kill too. Yeah, and you're only you're very squishy though, and I think what yeah, you do that. is you uh, you blood barrage like because you know the shadow has like a two tick. Uh, travel animation yeah so you sh you blood barrage the stack of sires at the end of the kill so mm -hmm. you get your health back apparently it's 36 kills an hour i tried it it was cool but uh i don't think i can afford the sorens for it <laughs> so i'm not doing it yeah i believe that but it definitely you should definitely try it like, i'll, like I'll look into shadow, that next uh, time KQ as well it's very good Shadow's shadow crack, KQ, dude. i have been loving shadow only kq that's yeah, one i've been really doing good. for a while now and i think somebody even somebody commented on one of my videos i i'd like gotten a kq task and i was like oh yeah kq i'm so excited to go back and he's like first person in existence to be excited <laughs> for a kq task He's not I'm like no nah, man. All all you need is a shadow, and KQ all of a sudden becomes pretty fun. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it is. I, I tried the shadow with uh, SGS with the the um, light bearer ring. Yep. And it was fun. Like, uh, I think it definitely meta meta for uh, getting the first like uh, you know when you're going for the diaries and you need to. Get oh, absolutely. Head. When you don't have head yet, for sure. But uh, I don't think I'll. I mean, I, I I got the pet recently though, so it doesn't matter for me. But shaking my head. <laughs> um. The the Omega Brain Strat that one of my one of the people in chat told me the other day when I was streaming is to bring the Ancient God Sword instead of the SGS. Since mm -hmm. you're in Mage Gear, you'll always get a twenty five. I guess you get twenty five health guaranteed every hit. Interesting. Yeah. Even if the NPC dies, you get the health? No. So instead, I've been specking KQ, and you miss slightly more, but I feel like you heal up overall more, and then you're not accidentally killing uh, the smaller and losing your cal tass. fights. Interesting. So I'd say overall it's worth, because then also you're dealing more damage to KQ as well then, too. 
Yeah, and also uh, you're not losing the Slayer task, which is good. And you're ensuring that you get the heal proc. Because if you one-shot the small cow fight, you don't get any heal proc, so. No I know the ancient way. Is really good. Did you get something else? Claws. Bro, is that a clog? Yes. What the fuck, dude? Why are you streaking? <laughs> You're Game's just the lucky, easy. you're just the good luck charm that I needed, man. <laughs> I'm gonna show good my log, Lord. it's depressing, dude. No ring, no Void Waker piece. GZ, I guess, your, your world record <laughs> Callisto completion. I guess, man. Now I just need pet and ring. Terry just said man's finishing Callisto while on podcast. Yeah, I guess we can't <laughs> we can't end this podcast until I complete Callisto, actually. It's like when you said you want to do the stream like a uh, winter Todd till pet. <laughs> You're doing stream yeah. Callisto till that one I long. actually that one I actually will do though. Yeah, that one's actually possible. Callisto till completion is gonna be like a lot of RNG. Like Fifteen thousand. Very, very swingy on which way it goes. Well, like 150 hours of Callisto, like, I think it's going to swing towards being long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it heavily, right, it heavily, well, I guess there are a bunch of other ones that are still relatively rare, too. Even if you spoon pet, it's still going to be long either way. All right. Do we have any other topics? We're literally about to two hours. I don't think so. I think we've talked about most of the things that I wanted to talk about, to be honest. Yeah, me too. All right. I guess. Oh, uh, someone someone in my chat just asked about uh, completion capes. Uh, like a oh, the completion cape. cape. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I was in another Discord talking to people about it. And uh, they said that, you know, uh, Jax, obviously they don't want to make it. So you have to complete the clock because that would be like kind of stupid. But mm -hmm. they were saying, like, they're proposing, like, 90% clock completion, which would be around 1,300 slots. That would be way too much, in my opinion. I think what they should do is they should have the untrimmed version be really easy, where it's, like, um, you know, combat achievement cape, quest cape, max cape, and maybe, like, a few, like, generic completion thing. But then they should make the trimmed cape be, like really insane requirements like at I could, least I could potentially clock. get around i could potentially get behind that but i don't think they should include 2k capes maybe they can make it so you have to get the 500 cape but the issue is is that like you can't like if you make the requirement because they're not actually completionist cape if you're not asking for like 2k capes but 2k capes are a little ridiculous like there's only five people with all 2k capes all three of them so that's a little excessive. And then Zuckhelm is quite a steep requirement too. So maybe that's not the best idea. But for that's why they, they should split it out. They should have the untrimmed version be much easier and the trim version be cracked. I could potentially get behind that. Um, well, the, the other thing that I was thinking about too is like, just make the, make the requirements for comp cape not based around the collection log so make it based around like getting untradeables completing the things in the character summary screen so that would be like 2277 total level quests completed achievements completed combat achievements i don't know where you would draw the line for that i think they said elite combat achievements so that's a whole nother story too and then for collection logs i don't know exactly what we would do there We've got a long line out here. Yeah. We'd probably just about start a, our own group just here. Oh, yeah, I'll somebody go. just said that. Oh, you can yoink that. Uh, do we wait or? There are like four people out there and several more people uh, doing clues. So we'll wait a so bit I think it could form be, a second team. It could be <laughs> worth starting a second team up. Um, but yeah, the Zuckham is kind of touchy. I feel like it should be included at least in the trim version. But I do agree that it's quite a, a rough requirement. In a trimmed trimmed version, I'll I'll give you that. Sure. It definitely it's, feels like it should be. Yeah, it's part it's of a, completion. 
I'm I'm curious how Jag is gonna um, like attack that problem because it's a tough one. If they make it yeah. too easy, it'll be like achievable for most, but people are gonna get mad. And if they make it too hard, it'll be achievable for for few, and a lot of people are gonna get mad. So. Yeah, and then it's also one of those things where it's like it's encouraging people to maybe play parts of the game that they don't want to have to play. I mean, that's that's kind of like the point of this entire game. <laughs> A little bit. But it's also part of the... Um, part of what I love so much about the collection log is it allows us to... Like, there's so much to do in the collection log that you can kind of just pick and choose whatever you want to do, really. And you can kind of just ignore what you don't want to do. So that's part of what I love about the collection log, whereas if you did a completionist cape, then you're, I don't want to say forced, but, you know, then you have to do certain content that maybe you didn't want to do. Yeah, I... I'm excited for it. I know they mentioned that they wanted to have like an item that you can unlock from a, a certain clock milestone. And then that item would be a requirement for the, uh, the, uh, Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't, heard, I didn't, they didn't say they were going to do that, but they mentioned it as an option. And I think that's a really I've good idea. I've heard plenty of people talk about a potential like offhand or something like that for, um, that would be like a book that levels up as you have more collection log slots that you've unlocked. That's and cool. I think that would, be a really fun flex item to that would like fill a similar role as a completionist cape but then you're right if you had that as an item you could have you know certain tier of it be required for the completionist cape which i think is a good way to make it feel a little less arbitrary for um how many collection log slots you're going to be requiring for the comp cape yeah because you're, you're completing the items and not necessarily the clock you know you're it, exactly it'll be, it'll be, yeah it makes exactly. sense I hope they go that path and make sure the item is cos cosmetic, not like a, oh, what the fuck? Someone just got a jar of darkness. <laughs> what? Wow. He's a thousand seventy four slots too. Holy shit. That's not a bad item to get, I suppose. Pretty good clock slot. Pretty decent. Above average. <laughs> <laughs> not as good as the claw though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that everything then, I think? I think that's pretty much everything to talk about then, honestly. Yeah. I got a ton of Discord pings I have to go look at. <laughs> I have got two, and one of them is from the Callisto Mass Discord. Yeah, I think the other one too. is from Log Hunters, so it was probably like Theo adding me for something stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I saw every morning he literally outs you sometimes, good morning, and I'm like, bruh, what the fuck are you yep. doing? That's good old Theo, all right. That's funny. Uh, do you think we should host... I was speaking to Petville about this. If someone's listening this deep into the, the podcast, they deserve it. Oh, there's a PK <laughs> here. Oh, there's two of them. I have not drank my hydrates yet, Toffee, no. I'll do that in just a second when we get off the call. Oh, I'm getting destroyed. Poor rat. He was really he was really leading up to something there, and now he's just getting shredded, so I guess. I just PK'd a shitter one second. Nice. Oh, no, I misclicked my... <laughs> oh, fuck, I died. Rip. Oh, uh, I misclicked my uh, Prey Melee. That was funny, but we killed someone. That was worth. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> I clipped that. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to say something. I was going to say you were in the yeah. middle of saying something. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I just baited everyone, dude, with the suspense. Uh, but, okay, what we should do is I was, th I was thinking of, like, 
like right now I'm a little too busy. Like I'm hosting a couple events for the CC, but I was thinking yeah. of hosting like a clog event for the clog hunters. Which would be? And what I was thinking of doing is we make like a list of every single clock cell in the game, all 1,443. Oh boy. Split into two teams. Give him like, I don't know, one week. And a team that completes the most slots wins. So, okay. So there would be two teams. Each team has a list of 741 and No, no, no. Each team has half. a list of the entire collection log. Oh, each team could do the entire collection yeah. log. Okay. And then if, like, imagine if we're in the same team and you get, like, the Claw of Callisto. If I get the Claw of Callisto, it doesn't count. So, yeah. So you can only collect each item once. Yeah. So it's basically just everyone... Each team starts at zero's, zero collections logged, and you and see raise. how many you can fill out. The only problem with that is that, like, some clogs are going to fill up way too fast. Like, uh, for example, some PVM bosses or, like, raids. Like, And also, if you collect, like, a 2k cape, does it count? Like, there's, like, some little small things you have to think about. Yeah, like, if... I mean... And if then also careful, stacking if clues you're... is too OP. Yeah, if you're careful with the teams... It's like, um, you know, there's going to be one person on each team that has trouble brewing finish. There's going to be one person on each team that has. Yeah, but I, what we could do is we can make it so you have to collect the clock slot for it to count. Like you have to get a clock slot broadcast for it to count. Interesting. Okay. But then like the people who haven't collected the, their capes yet for like raids, that's a pretty big advantage. Like people can stack. Yeah. Stuff. So it's like, uh, I don't know. But I was thinking it would be pretty cool. I think if you just pulled it back a little bit and made it only PVM, then that maybe... already exists. Uh, we've done that event before. It's called PVM Comp. Every single PVM boss, every single unique. But the difference is, is that you can claim it like, um, like everyone can claim whatever they want. Like if I'm the same team and you get a Claw of Callisto, if I get a Claw of Callisto, we can both submit it. So it's personal. so then you'd get so you'd get two for that. Yeah, but if you get a dupe, that doesn't count. But I would say, but then if you got a second claw of Callisto, that would not count. Yeah, and we had all PVM bosses. We had all raids. We had like demonics and Slayer. That's yeah, anything and, that uh, like, be a Slayer uh, story monster. And, like, all the other shit. Interesting. And Dragon Warhammer, and it was really cool. It's a really fun event. Like you just kind of run around and do whatever you want. And if you're like a clogger, that's a perfect event. Because if I'm Greenlog Cerberus, I don't want to do Cerberus during a bingo. Like, fuck that. Mm -hmm. But in that sort of event, you don't have to. But I was thinking of doing the same thing, but with clog. Oh, for 2k capes, you could award, you could use Temple to track kill count and award based on how many raids they do. That's actually a good idea. I I actually do kind of like that. That's yeah. cool. That's, I didn't think of that. That's smart. I say, over, overall, it seems like a really fun idea. I would just be mostly worried about the admin work behind trying to keep track of the teams and yeah, who you, submitted um, what. I, one of my but, friends, Abe, he's a software engineer. He In the last event, he coded it so that when you submitted a tile, it automatically went in the sheet. Incredible. The only thing you have to do is you have to like check mark, manual check mark to confirm it's not like bullshit. Yeah. And uh, we were very clear, like if people submit bullshit, they're instantly banned from the event and the clan. Like we were super strict about that. Never had any issues for, for, for it. So we'd have to do the same thing. But it was really Damn. cool. That's that's pretty snazzy. That's a sick idea for an event. And if we do it in the clog Discord, I was thinking like we could probably get like a thousand signups, like something disgusting. Dude. Especially since if we're if we're making it so it has to be a new collection log slot, then you're encouraging people who have like two like people who have two hundred log slots are gonna be better yeah, at that's it the than first people pick. who have like <laughs> 1200 log slots yeah like everyone that's high in the clog are like pretty much that detriment to their team that would be pretty yeah but then at the same time they are really high so it's like they've got good gear and stuff to grind out i don't know raids or something but man that would be that would, that sounds pretty fun actually i kind of like it yeah especially especially if you have a way to streamline the submitting process yeah you have when to I, otherwise it'll be when i was an days. admin when I was an admin for Eternal Gems, that would be sometimes the worst part of running events would just be like making sure people are submitting their items and putting it all into the spreadsheets, make sure it's all legit. Yeah. 
it's such a, a pain it's all man. secretary work someone in my chat just said basilicious last pick <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean you would still want to pick him because like if he gets like a he can do raids and all that but i i think it the making it the unique clog it makes it a little too rough for like uh the high-end players but i don't know i'm okay i'm open to both options something something fuck the hlc right yeah and iron man too <laughs> and mostly iron man too and, and mostly Highland. green helms yeah ah oh, disgusting <laughs> what do you think about the gym shop do you know what the gym shop is i think it's so funny yeah i think it's hilarious i think it just shows uh the uh like the like the gap in the group iron man game mode yeah well it's... not the gr uh, group iron man the unofficial group iron man yeah right. It's such a shame that Group Iron Man has gone down such a bad path because it's like everyone wanted Group Iron Man for so long because it's like such a cool idea getting to play with your friends on an Iron Man, right? But then like inevitably it all falls apart after like one month when people yeah. are like, I don't want to have to play eight hours a day on this new account or something like that. Like also and like then, the, um, I think the... Like they, the hype was in 2017, and they kind of missed out. They should have. It was a little bit. It was a little bit of a too little, too late, as well. True. Like I, I actually voted no, by the way, for the GIMP update when they pulled it. Based. And uh, I thought it was a not worth the dev time. That was my excuse because I didn't think it was mm -hmm. gonna survive. It survived better than I expected, honestly. Someone just asked what the GIMP shop is. You want? You want to explain it? Basically, if I remember correctly, basically um, unofficial group Iron Men, which are basically like group Iron Men that have formed a new team, basically like two original group Iron Men teams, a couple people left, and then now they're merging into a new team, essentially. Uh, they become unofficial group Iron Men, but you can have people join your unofficial group Iron Men team then they can like trade over items and then leave. So people were just like selling items to group Iron Man teams. Is that pretty much correct, right? Yeah, basically. But not only group Iron Man can become unofficial groups. If you're an Iron Man, you can un de iron to a group Iron Man. And really? That's actually that's where most of the items come from. Because if I imagine if right now, today, I have a 10 bill bank on my iron and I decide I want to quit. I don't de iron to a main. I de iron to GIMP, and then I'd sell. I sell all my items on the GIMP shop for like two to three extra G value. Yeah. And then I de iron to a main, and I triple my bank. Genius. But like, uh, I know some of my friends who quit the game. That's what they did, by the way. They uh, GIMP shop dumped <laughs> their entire bank. I didn't realize that you could go from iron to group iron, but it makes sense since group iron is less restrictive than iron. Yeah, I think the whole thing is fucking dumb, though. <laughs> they should have uh, they should have not done unofficial group iron. I think that was like I don't know, man. It's weird. It's it's tough because it's like it's a inevitable issue that they ran into as teams started to fall apart because they were going to. There's no way all the teams would stay together, so people wanted to start creating new teams. But it's like, how do you properly? keep track of that without saying yeah you're sol you got to make a new account mm. yeah i understand the idea like i know some of my friends they d like their friends got hacked on their irons and then they both they're both regular irons they both de iron to gimps and they played together like that's fine you know like the that honestly seems like the better way of doing it that way you yeah. don't have to start over on a new account that people are going to get burnt on but the gimp shot made it cringe but i will say yeah. whoever like the i think it's reels from uh, olympus who started the gym shop i think or someone else i don't remember but whoever started the gym shop is a fucking genius i'll give him that <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> really smart and man making found bank. a a need and he fulfilled it yeah fulfilled it really well too uh, the first time i saw the gym shop i laughed so hard like i was fucking <laughs> crying dude and i was reading the prices and i was like no way this is real Uh, but yeah, gym shop. Funny shit.
All right. I think we've talked about everything that we need to, right? Yep. And a lot more. Any last suggestions from chat? Mm -hmm. Nothing from my side. All right. If we don't have anything then, it was great talking to you. Like I said, this was something that was a long time in the coming that I said that I should have done a while ago. Yeah, it was fun. I also really like doing it uh, live on stream. I think it's uh, way more fun. And we also get like feedback and corrections. Like sometimes we misspeak and then someone in the chat is going to call this Agreed. Out. It is, even though, you know, there's not a ton of interaction with chat, it is nice having just like a small, the smallest little interaction with chat yeah. if they've got a suggestion for something. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, it was a pleasure. We can do this again sometime. Uh, maybe Absolutely. when like, they uh, release the um, the comp caves. I think that would be an interesting time. That would be a great time. Or even if they just released um, what like the expected requirements would be oh, for yeah, a comp yeah. cave or something like that. That would also just be perfect time to talk. Yeah, I saw like a few spreadsheets of like the current list of potential items. And I was like, holy shit, I don't have half of these. <laughs> I was surprised when some people were talking about... Um, who somebody was saying in the log hunters discord i think about like all these different things and i'm like wow there's a lot of stuff on here i didn't think about yeah, there's a lot more i think than that's I that's what i would be most excited that's why whenever we talk about comp cape i always try to steer it away from collection log cuz i'm like i'm already trying to do the collection log can we focus on like other stuff with this too like full museum kudos and like filling out all the fossils in the museum and like weird stuff like that I'm like, I wish there was a reason for me to want to do that type of content. Yeah, whatever they do, just don't make us collect all graceful set colors. Because <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, that would be a tough one. I still, I still like vaguely want to do that one day, but oh boy, that would be bad for the content uh, oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Unless it's AFK able, but yeah, it's not. But uh, all right, it was a pleasure. We'll uh, all right. Yeah, I'll make sure to drop your uh, your links in the description as well. Oh, please do. And I've uh, got... don't forget to follow and sub us on uh, YouTube and Twitch. And uh... Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. Oh yeah, camp it online on all of them. Bet. I'll add that in the links. And uh, peace out, lads. Take care.